So my husband was like, Jen, take a break. We can get some more fabric. You can try this again. It's not the end of the world. I'm like, well, you clearly didn't hear me, but I just burned a freaking hole in it. So yeah, it kind of is the end of the world, Mike. I'm back and today I'm gonna be trying something out from 1973 and apparently it's so easy even a five-year-old can do it which naturally means I have way too much confidence yeah so here we are. This is the Mattel Sew Magic Barbie fashion set. Oh, it's so dusty. <laughs> so the cool thing about this, and the reason why I think I can do it, if it does in fact still work, is that there are no needles involved. Yes, you heard that right, folks. We are sewing without needles today. <gasps> Alert the media. They won't care though. And that's because this is supposed to use some kind of futuristic back in the day technology known as fabric glue or something like that. What is it called? Actually, no, it was Miracle Stitch or something. But apparently that allowed for girls of all ages, as long as they were five and up, to create their own wonderful sewn up masterpieces. Because back in the day, as we all know, toys geared at females were meant to create a more homemaker-like lifestyle as the children grew up. In fact, I'm pretty sure that was one of the selling points that your younger girls would get an interest in sewing a little sooner than they might have done so organically. And who doesn't want that? Actually, in all reality, who wouldn't want to learn how to make doll clothes so that you can make more for your dolls and not have to spend money? But still, it's a little sexist. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're all thinking it. So I bought this as a Facebook Marketplace purchase probably about a year and a half ago, and it was only $10. Now, at the time I was like, wow, that's a vintage Barbie thing that might be a way to teach me how to sew, except I found out after that it won't, um, and I want it. Wow, what a great price. But I later discovered, actually this morning, that there's a very good reason that this item item specifically, whether vintage or not, doesn't actually sell for very much, even to people who are collectors. And that is because the Miracle Stitch, which is inside it, the fabric glue, if you will, I'm really in a quotations mood, sorry, has a tendency even in the past to dry up because it comes in a little cartridge or something that gets put into the machine instead of a thread and needle. And that's how the clothing would be essentially stitched together. You most likely could have bought replacements, but for the most part, in terms of collecting, this wouldn't be an ideal thing unless you only planned to place it on a shelf and never test it out. But I mean, really? I'm gonna test it out. I have Barbies. I like to pretend I can sew and this doesn't use needles. So I want to believe that the glue is gonna be perfect and that was only a faulty issue for 99.99999% of everyone else who ever had one of these and that mine will be just fine. But realistically, that's probably not the case and I can either put everything back in the box and call it a day or we can try to find other ways to do things, most likely without the use of the machine, but I have come prepared with some fabric glue and uh, I can glue things. So if it doesn't work, hey, it is what it is. I don't, <laughs> I, yep. Okay, so now let's switch down to the table and check out the box because it is pretty cool. Super dusty, so excited. Not really, let's get that part out of the way and then we can see what we're working with. So here's our box straight from the 70s. There's obviously quite a bit of discoloration, but other than that, it's in pretty good condition, excluding some rips and tears. So here's the front. It says Mattel Sew Magic Barbie Fashion Set and it's the new way to sew. Safe, no needle, no thread. And we have a full color image of a young girl clearly enjoying her sew magic sewing machine. Both sides of the box have the exact same image. This one here is pink with black lines and the other is full color. It looks a lot better, so we'll just focus here. Once again, it says Mattel Sew Magic Barbie Fashion Set, the new way to sew, safe, no needle, no thread. And we see that same girl enjoying her Sew Magic sewing machine. The bottom of the box says patterns for all, fabric for up to four of these, dress, two blouses, two skirts, shorty pajamas, and a purse. And then it shows us pictures of all the contents, which would be a dressmaker form, the Sew Magic machine, Miracle Stitch cartridge, instructions, eight templates or patterns, a marking pencil, four rubber bands, four pieces of fabric, a waistband guide, and two buckles or ribbons. And the top of the box shows simple instructions of how easy it is to make your own clothing. So you'll mark out the pattern, pop in a cartridge, and sew. Then cut it out and add accessories. Sounds simple enough. That is until we flip to the back of the box where it shows there's just a little bit more involved than that. So one is to mark the pattern. It's practically 
mistake proof. Sew Magic Method helps to teach skills applicable to real sewing at a later age. For sewing, says sew, just pop in the cartridge Miracle Stitch. Non toxic liquid sewing formula joins fabric without complication. Of blank, 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 blank. It is blank, 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 blank. It's safety tested against pinching or pricking little fingers. So glad we have that information. Third, it says cut. Lines are easy to follow, seams are strong, and will not pull apart easily. Designs are uncomplicated for easy completion. And lastly, we add our accessories. Patterns are reusable for continuing enjoyment. Complete instructions are provided. Awesome. That's it for the box, and now we open it up and see what we're working with. Hopefully, no spiders. Ooh, that's crunchy. Ooh, that's yellowed. <laughs> So like I said, I picked this up for $10, and funny enough, that's actually, as far as I can tell, what the price was brand new. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so here is our dress form. Not sure if you guys can see that, but it is quite gross looking. I'm definitely gonna wipe all of these things down and wash my hands before continuing once I've taken everything out. Here is the sewing machine, and this has yellowed quite a bit considering when this was released. I'm pretty certain it was white and pink. Here's our Miracle Stitch cartridge. Not gonna lie, it sounds completely empty or solid. <laughs> We've got some patterns here. Some of them have been popped out, but quite a few of them are still intact. Then we've got some Sew Magic instructions. This was sold in Canada. Cool, cool, cool. And once again, it shows us everything that we were meant to have in the set and some pretty detailed instructions on how to get things done. And then back here, it tells you that there are other Sew Magic add-ons that you could have gotten. So there's Barbie, Ken, Skipper, rag dolls, and animals, pretty pillows, baby tender love clothes, and Miracle Stitch cartridge refills. There you have it. There you go. It's a thing. Or it was a thing anyways. Continuing. Oh, what just happened? Continuing on, we have a bag of fabric. I see at least one elastic in there. Here's a little golf pencil. I guess it was um, a marking pencil, they said. And what else have we got? Oh, found a little Mattel sticker that fell off the sewing machine. I'll probably glue that back on. And then a hard plastic. Oh, dropping it. And then a hard plastic piece. Oh, and lastly, one more sticker. So I'll put that on as well. And that's it, folks. Now I'm just going to take a Lysol wipe and gently clean everything off because right now it's obviously kind of dirty. It's been sitting for quite a while and I'm pretty certain this started out white with bright pink features. And to be honest, there are faded sticky spots all over it. Don't know if that makes sense, but at one point they were sticky and gunk has indeed stuck to them. And once everything dries, I'm going to put the stickers back on, including the largest one, which has unfortunately fallen off as soon as I started moving the sewing machine around. But oh my goodness, these do not want to stay down. They keep on curling. And it just dawned on me that I forgot all about the batteries, which will be inserted underneath down here. There's a little pink flap. Boop. And inside we're supposed to pop two D batteries. Now, unfortunately, I am not prepared with these. This just happens to be the only battery I don't have in abundance. And sadly, the store is now closed, which means I'm gonna have to stop until tomorrow. In the meantime, I'll just keep pushing down these stickers until the glue sets. Hey guys, welcome back to day two, where unfortunately I have the awesome privilege of bringing you guys some bad news. Mostly bad news for me, but if you were interested in seeing whether or not this was gonna work out, it's bad news for you too. Because when I picked up the D batteries I was needing and inserted them into the Sew Magic sewing machine, unfortunately, absolutely nothing happened. So I thought maybe they were upside down. No, not the case. Then I thought maybe they're dead and tried a few others. <laughs> Once again, nothing. That's when I used my brain and called the husband down with his tools to see if he could figure out what was wrong since he's got these little things that test the circuits and whatnot. And we learned that something is indeed missing from the inside here. Why am I showing you nothing? It looks like a plastic cavity to you guys, but it seems as though there is a piece of metal somewhere along the lines there that is no longer here. And that's preventing us from creating any kind of electrical circuit, which means sadly we cannot use this. And even though we can usually look online for pictures of these sort of things to see what's missing and possibly order it, apparently nobody decided to take pictures of the inside of their 1973 sewing machine that doesn't actually sew, which means it's not useful today, unfortunately. And to my extreme confusion and surprise, my magic stitch cartridge here is also not useful because it's dried out. And somehow I just assumed that it would be perfect and I would be the exception to the rule. And everything was just gonna go perfectly for me in this non-sewing adventure. But you know what's not broken? 
patterns and fabric. They have withstood the test of time. And I have lots of fabric glue, a hint of desperation, but mostly determination to make something come of this because I was really, really excited. And I refuse to let this day end on a sad note. I will have some form of Barbie clothes. Whether or not they're good remains to be seen, but we won't figure that out until we get started. So now let's switch down to the table again. Roll up our sleeves. Hold on. Roll up our sleeves, I said. It's chilly down here in the basement. And we can get started. All right, so let's get prepped. I've got my instructions, some fabric glue, the waist guide band, some scissors, my patterns. I still need to pop some out. And the fabrics. Oh, it looks like somebody already made a shirt or blouse. And surprisingly, these seams are very secure. What's it like on the inside? Ooh, <laughs> kind of gnarly looking. But regardless, this tells me that at one point this worked. As for us, we're gonna need to see what instructions we're still able to follow. So let's just skip all the stuff about the machine and head right to page six. So the first outfit is a long skirt, blouse, and purse. Obviously one's already done, so let's just get started on the skirt. So here's the long skirt pattern. I'll carefully pop this out from the larger piece of paper, along with all the little tabs. And then using this pink and blue floral fabric, we're supposed to fold it in half, good side to good side, which is the brighter of the two sides, or has a softer feeling to it. And then take the pattern and stick it in the center and trace around the entire thing, making sure to also fill in all these little holes that we've created by popping out the little pieces. Next step is supposed to be to fold this down firmly and begin feeding it through the machine where this cartridge would have dispensed the Miracle Stitch solution along these lines here seeping through to both pieces of fabric which would have attached them together and once it dried we could have cut everything out and flipped it inside right. But since I can't use this and I have to rely on fabric glue I'm actually going to be working good side to good side, but from the bad side. Hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to get started by darkening up the little tab lines that we colored in so that I'll be able to see them through the fabric. Then I'll put down a piece of plastic, that way nothing sticks to the surface beneath it. Then I'm going to fold it back and apply the fabric glue on the good sides. That way when it dries we'll be able to flip it inside right and it should look like a nice clean seam. I really hope this works out because I only have one piece of fabric this size. And also because if it doesn't work then I have no clue how to proceed with the rest of the pieces. Alright so that's one side and now we'll repeat on the other. And there we go. Next up, I'm supposed to be making the blouse and purse. And unfortunately, they are both meant to use the same piece of fabric, which is no longer in this set. Because as we know, somebody already made one of them. Which means I'm left to use fabric from around my house. And I know I have at least enough to make a purse. And I know it, it's not gonna match, but hey, at least we have some. And by the looks of it, it's literally just enough. So once again, I'm just gonna trace everything, including including the little cutout sections and apply the glue on the good sides. That way we can flip it after. And you know what the best part is? There's still no sewing involved. If these actually work out and don't look horrible, we can use these patterns over and over. And my kids can too. That's a win. <laughs> I just know someone out there is watching this thinking to themselves, that is way too much fabric glue. It's totally unnecessary. But in my defense, I've never done this before and I wanna make sure it works. Okay, second piece complete. I'll leave this off to the side and we can move on. Ooh, look guys, I found some cute fabric. I cut some pajamas to turn them into shorts a while back and I saved this. So I actually wanna redo the purse. And you know what? Let's get crazy and do the blouse again too. I'm in a polka dotty cotton candy festive mood. Okay, so the purse is smaller. Let's start with that. Once again, just tracing everything and filling in the little cutouts. Wow, you can really see how ugly it looks on the white fabric. And now the glue. There we go. So that's it for the purse, and now we'll attempt the blouse. This one seems slightly more complicated, but I believe in my abilities to read and follow the instructions. Step one, done. Step two, glue. 
All right, so I have two purses, a shirt, and a skirt. Jen is in business. Ooh, check it out, guys. Turns out there was more than one blouse pattern. One has capped sleeves, and the one that was made previously is more of a tank, which means I did the right thing by choosing to make a second. So I can't really do any of the remaining steps for the pieces I just created until they're dry, and I would have been able to create a belt to complete my new outfit. Unfortunately, even though I have ribbon here, the little buckle piece is not in the set, so I can't do that, which means I'm gonna skip to the next page. Ooh, which would be this capped sleeve blouse that I just made and a short skirt. And these are the two fabrics they wanted used, so you know what, I think I'm gonna do it again. And we'll start with the skirt first. It is so much easier to trace on these fabrics, oh my gosh, I'm just speeding through. Time to glue, time to glue, time to glue. And since I can see through this fabric, it's easier to apply the glue. Wow, look at that, I'm already done. Positively effortless. On to the blouse. I really hope these turn out as cute as they do in the pictures. All right. Since the floral pattern is a little distracting, I'm gonna use that waist measurement tool to fold it directly at the seams. That way the glue goes where it needs to. I know, so smart, right? And there we go. It looks like there's only three patterns left that we haven't tried. That would be the Barbie dress, her pajama top, and bottoms. So I'm gonna pop these out and try to make them. Once again, I'll be using other fabrics that I scrounged up from other clothing because there's no more left in the box. What are my options? For the pajama set, I'm gonna go with this pale blue t-shirt material because I think it will look really cute and delicate. I just need to make sure to hold the fabric down firmly when I'm drawing so that it doesn't stretch it out. Okay. There we go, one done, and on to the next. There we go, that's the pajamas done. Which means the only thing left is the dress. And for this one, I'll be using some black and red plaid pajamas because it just seems like a good idea. Oh, but this one's gonna be trouble because the pencil doesn't show up very well on the fabric. It's too dark. Maybe a pen will work better. I suppose as long as I can see the cutouts, we're good. Here's where that optimism and desperation comes in, guys. I will be thorough and meticulous and slow, heavy-handed if necessary to make this work because now that I've seen this pattern and have an idea of what it could look like, which by the way is incredibly cute in my mind, I have to see it through. All right, moment of truth. You know what? I can see it. That'll do. That'll do. Let's go. I'm definitely going to use that waist measurement tool as a guide to make sure that I am finding the cutouts though because I don't want to mess this up. Oh, I just had a horrible thought. What if I've been doing this inside out the whole time? Oh my gosh, could you imagine? I would cry. I really hope these fit my dolls. Wouldn't that suck if I figured it out and they don't fit? All right, the very last outfit has been glued. So I'm gonna leave it off to the side with the others. And hey, we're back with nice, completely dried pieces. I did leave these overnight just to make sure that everything was nice and secure and that nothing fell apart on me. So now all we have to do is cut everything out. And I'm gonna take my time when I do this to keep my cuts clean and as close to the sketch as possible. That way, when I flip them inside right, hopefully we've reduced the bulk at the seams and the areas without glue don't look like someone attacked them with a hacksaw. I'm so nervous, oh my gosh. You know, squishing down my glue may have been a bad idea because now the seam is quite large. Oh no, let's give this a flip. It's not the worst. <laughs> but it's definitely not the best. Let's see if I can salvage that. Oh gosh, I hope that's not the case for everything. Moment of truth. I'm excited now. I have a lot of confidence and optimism um, because this seems to have worked. How cute is that? And surprisingly not as dramatic of a fabric as I thought it was gonna be. Maybe in comparison to the pink, oh, hold on. Maybe in comparison to the pink and floral, it will stand out a bit, but in a regular everyday situation, it's pretty cute. Ooh, okay. Okay, so the two skirts need a waistband attached and that requires a few extra steps and more glue and dry time. So I will leave those to the end and instead continue on with the other patterns. So this one's the second purse that I made. Let's flip it and see what we're working with. And here it is. Not horrible, definitely bigger than the one I had to fix. But to be honest, I like the look of the thinner handle. This one is really, really thick. So let's turn it inside out again and trim it down. 
and there we go. So much better, even if it does cut off the top of the cotton candy. This is exciting. I'm so excited. Oh, I got to finish all the pieces. So let's move on to the floral blouse next. I will admit that although my fabric glue skills are clearly not the greatest, one benefit to using it versus the actual cartridge that came with the machine is that it dries clear and the Miracle Stitch solution that was in the cartridge actually looked pretty gross and brown. It was very hard and it didn't look pleasant, just for your memory. If you're thinking it only looks this way because it sat for years and possibly discolored, I looked it up and a lot of people said that it stayed this color even back in the day. So I'm kind of happy that I had to do it this way because at least I will have nice clean looking products, assuming of course each one works out. So let's go ahead and flip this one since I finished cutting it. And here we go. This looks more like a tunic than a blouse, but it did definitely work and a lot better actually than the purses did. So that's great. Is it going to be sheer on the dolls though? I don't know. We'll have to see. I can't wait to put together an entire outfit. Let's see how that same pattern worked out on the cotton candy fabric. It is a lot floppier, so it's not as easy to cut, but I am managing. Okay, moment truth. I have a feeling that this is going to look more like pajamas. Uh, <laughs> or that. Hopefully it looks better on the doll because right now it just kind of looks weird, but it worked and that's what matters. So we've got that shirt, that shirt, and the one that someone else made. And you know what? I might trim this up because it's bothering me that the two straps are not even. And while I'm here, I'm going to trim down the seams as well because they're just so stiff and they're clearly secured and they won't be as bulky. That's better. I'll just fold it in half and trim down this. Okay, let's flip it and see if that helped much better. And now we have three shirts. All right, let's cut out the pajamas now. These ones here, I'm not sure how well they'll work out. I had high hopes because the color was nice and delicate and it definitely looks like a pajama material, but it was really stretchy. So I'm not certain if it's actually going to stay on her body or if it'll just fall off of her. Also, as you can see, the lines are very dark, so I'm pretty sure it's going to go right through it even when we flip it. We'll have to see. All right, time to flip. That's the shirt. And now the bottoms. Ooh, <laughs> they're so cute. Oh gosh, I really, really hope they fit. Oh my goodness. Hold on, let's see if I can put it down here. Oh, it's so cute. Ooh, imagine if I added lace. <gasps> wow, I really like that. Chop up your shirts, guys. And you know what? I can't see through it. Ooh, that's awesome. Okay, next I will do the dress. I'm really, really excited for the dress. Probably way too excited. Now I've got way too much optimism and something's gonna knock me down a peg. I just know it. Oh, it's so hard to see my lines. Don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up, don't mess up. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? Put that back on for a second. That'll help me. Ha! Ooh, who's smart now? <laughs> I'm a genius and continue on. So now I just got to slice here and flip it. I definitely think there's going to be a fraying problem with this fabric, unfortunately, because I can already see that and that's a bummer. So I'm going to flip it very carefully. Come on, come on. Oh, that sucks. I hate frays. The fabric just keeps on giving because of all the different plaid sections. And I can't even trim it down right now because otherwise it will just keep tugging. So I'll have to deal with that later. But in the meantime, notice how it's adorable. It looks really funny in my hand because it wants to pull together. I'm assuming it's going to look better on the doll. Which brings us to our final two pieces, our long and short skirts. First thing to do is cut them out. That's one. and two. Now these ones here are different from the other pieces because they actually gave us little areas to create a cinched waist so that they can fit on the doll's body better. So the next steps will be to take our waist guide and slip it up through the long skirt, then take one of the rubber bands and slip it over the top directly above the little dots that I made. Then fold the fabric down over the rubber band. Then at this point we would have put it back through the sewing machine to attach it all together, which naturally means I will be using fabric glue again. And I'm going to put a lot thinner of an application this time. 
At this point of the instructions, they say to remove the waistband guide and to flip the skirt inside right, which makes me think that that Miracle Stitch solution actually dried relatively instantly, but I can't confirm that. Me, on the other hand, I need to wait for my fabric glue to dry, and because I'm in the cool basement with air conditioning, I think that process takes a lot longer than it would otherwise. So in an effort to not take hours, I'll be finishing these skirts off with a hair dryer. All right, so here are both of my skirts. You might have noticed that about halfway through the drying process on the guide for each one, I decided to take them off and made sure to dry on the inside because I noticed that they were starting to stick to the actual plastic here, meaning that the glue was still wet on the inside. So I kind of just held them like this and made sure that that section dried as well and also sent them for a little bit of a flight. <laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, other than being incredibly see-through for at least this yellow one, I am hopeful that this worked. So let's give them a flip and check it out. Yes, this is exciting. And you know what? If that little belt buckle section wasn't missing from the kit, we would have been able to cover this up. Luckily, my fabric glue says that you can wash the item just with certain instructions. So I will do that. And hopefully we won't have to see all those pencil marks, but yeah, this is a success, or at least I think so. I'm so excited. Guys, we've made everything and they all feel like you got them from your grandma's house. And I don't know why, but that's just really, really exciting to me. So let's zoom out and get some room here and see what these are like on the dress form. First up, the cotton candy shirt. It kind of just looks weird, not gonna lie. Maybe if we had that section flipped in a bit. I mean, it's not horrible, but at the end of the day, it is still pajamas, but at least it worked. Ooh, wait, I wanna see what the dress is like because this is the one I am most excited for. Oh, we can't fit in that way. Looks like we have to go in through the top. Oh, I'm so excited. Wait, why am I trying these on a dress form? I have dolls. Here, we'll try her. She's pretty close in size to this silhouette. Oh, she's gonna ruin the sleeves. Oh, I'm so nervous. How am I gonna do it? How am I gonna do it? Hold on, what the heck am I doing? Oh, she's too big. Nope, that's not gonna go. Not that, ah, no, 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 but I can't get her arms in the sleeves. Eee! Maybe can I go from the bottom? No, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is not working out. Hold on, we'll try one more thing. I doubt this is gonna work because her shoulders are pretty broad. Oh gosh, no, it's not happening. No, no, no. Ah! <laughs> Why, I'm so sad. Ah, I'm pulling the threads out. Ah, I'm pulling her hair out. Ah! This is a disaster. Okay, turns out my dress sucks. What am I doing? I'm gonna fix this though. I'll just slice the back, add some buttons, and it will be a forward facing dress. Yes, you can't keep me down. Um, stay tuned for footage of when that's complete later. And in the meantime, we'll try a different look. Like pajamas. Everybody loves a good old pair of jammies. Get your arms in. Come on, Barbie. You've got this. I believe in you. I believe in you. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Wait, she needs some underwear. I don't know if they're just gonna fall down or not. Moment of truth. They're a little loose. They kind of look like granny panties. Okay, I'm <laughs> and by a little, I mean a lot. They would probably fit a newer Barbie more since they have a flatter waist area, but at least it's not falling down and it is hidden beneath her little baby doll. Wow, I'm so excited. We really got to do something about her hair though. Girl needs some help. To be fair, I thrifted this a while ago for about $2 and um, I didn't do this, so don't blame me. All right, so that's that worked out, but what I really want to know is what the skirts are like. Yes, what are the skirts like? So I'm going to try on the tank that was already made for us. Will it go over Barbie's hips? Let's see. In order to do this, we do need to raise her arms all the way up and go around them because she can't bend inside. This is super interesting. What am I doing? I look like I can't function as a human being who enjoys dolls. Oh gosh, she's stuck. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Come on now, <laughs> Barbie. Oh man. Oh. Wait, wait, it's happening. Yay, we did it. Oh, perfect. I'm really glad I trimmed down those sleeves. And now her skirt. Oh goodness, this is gonna look so perfectly vintage. Can't believe this is working out. 
Who would have saw this turnaround coming? Ugh, I'm gonna make so much clothes. Tuck it in. If she had a belt, it would be cuter. Okay, so I'm gonna try a piece of ribbon in the center just so that we can see what it would look like with a bow. Also taking the time to mention that I suck at making bows, especially on a tiny scale. So we're just gonna pretend that it's good. And there we go. Oh my goodness, she's so so cute. And of course we can't forget her green purse. Now as adorable as this looks at this very strange angle, I am known for better footage. So let's check out what these outfits are actually like, where we can see them. There, isn't that better? Now we can actually see her full body and how the clothes are fitting on her. To be honest, some of the pieces are actually really tricky to put on the dolls because you'd think that you should pull them over their heads, but no, they have really broad shoulders, making you think that it would make more sense to pull it up over their hips since they are thinner. But then no, because surprisingly, you still have to get them over their arms, which in this case is still an issue because these are not made to move dolls. We can't just bend her arms any which way we want in order to stick them through the armholes. Meaning that although it didn't fit going over her head, I still had to slowly shimmy everything up over her broad shoulders and carefully stick her arms through them and then proceed to shimmy everything back down. And unfortunately, because I did not use the very best of glues, some of the seams actually started pulling apart, especially in the skirts, most specifically the yellow one. Even though everything had dried solid, once I tried to gently expand the elastic band to slip it over her waist, the side seams started to split. Basically Basically, it split open and the elastic band underneath the little waist we created also did. So if I were to take this off of her now, you would just have half an exposed elastic band with some fabric all floppy willy nilly. However, if you weren't to look up close and she's posed in just the right way, especially with that killer hairdo, everything looks as though it's right in the world. Except here's the truth, it's not. There was an entire ordeal that took place between me finishing that last scene where I was trying clothing on and getting you this footage. So join me back on the chair for story time. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this brief since this is already a really long video. And I'm gonna preface this by saying I am not proud <laughs> or ashamed of my behavior because I had a lot going on. But like I said, you guys could clearly see how excited I was by everything that was taking place while creating my pieces. So once I cleaned everything up and was getting ready to get my footage to show everything off, that's when I realized I can't do that because she's looking pretty gnarly. She had big bald spots in her hair because she's an older doll and it actually felt really gummy and gross. So I wrapped her in a ton of saran wrap, tape, and even a double layer of Walmart protection, okay? I took a Walmart bag and wrapped it around her so tight, tied it really firmly around her neck, and then used elastic bands to secure everything. Okay, I prepped in the only ways I knew how. And then I took some boiling water and poured it over her head because I wanted to train her hair to lie flat. That way when I brushed it, it wouldn't stick out kind of like this because that's what it looked like when I took it out of the ponytail. I have no clue how long it had been sitting like that, but basically it looked horrible. And so she needed a boil wash and a straighten. And so I just left her there to dry and went on my merry way with my daughter and we made more clothing. I was really excited about that. We spent a couple hours making a bunch more pieces. We found more clothing to cut up and we were both just having a grand old time until I checked on my doll and discovered that her head had absorbed all the boiling water and it seeped down through the plastic and the saran and the tape and the elastics and her outfit was soaked. I immediately started crying and I know it's a little bit of an overreaction but I had worked so hard. You wouldn't think it was hard to just cut a pattern and stick glue down and then wait but I can't wait. I'm impatient. I have supreme ADHD. I have a supreme need to get things right the first time. I need to always just do my best and when I discover that I did my best and then it all got ruined by a careless mistake which is my own fault. Yes. I cried, okay? I'm not proud of it, but I acknowledge it and I'm here for it. I, I own it <laughs> because it's just, that's that's what happened, okay? And um, basically my careless mistake was that I forgot to take off her outfit. I thought it was secure enough and well protected and it obviously wasn't, like at all. 
<laughs> so yeah, I was crying. I took everything off of her. She was completely soaked. And when I looked at her skirt, and of course this happened to be the outfit I was most excited for, it was the long pink skirt. When I looked at it, both seams from top to bottom were completely split open. And it was basically just hanging on by the folded over waistband section. And that wasn't actually intact either because when I took it off of her body, boom, we just had two flappy pieces of fabric and crinkled up edges. But they still had their glue there. So they decided to dry that way. Yay. So exciting. So I cried more. <laughs> um, so I washed them off, laid them out flat, and tried to blow dry them so that they would dry up faster. That way I could start the whole process of reassembling it and getting it back downstairs for my footage all over again. But this time I was like, hey, it worked when I hair dried it last time to make it speed up. So that should work again now, right? Wrong. It burned a hole in the fabric. So at this point I'm bawling my eyes out on the floor, crying like a baby and trying really hard to keep it really quiet at first. But eventually it just grew into something more and I took my glasses off and I just threw them on the floor and I was just, it was loud. <laughs> it was not pretty. I'm an ugly crier. I was really upset. Basically nobody knew other than the fact that I had ruined and was trying to fix the piece that I made how damaged it was. So my husband was like, Jen, take a break. We can get some more fabric. You can try this again. It's not the end of the world. I'm like, well, you clearly didn't hear me, but I just burned a freaking hole in it. So yeah, it kind of is the end of the world, Mike. <laughs> I'm not proud of that either. <laughs> but that's when I realized with Mike's help, of course. One, I was kind of overreacting because I was in that moment. And two, it was most likely because I hadn't eaten at all. So while it's very true that I worked really hard on these things and was really excited and hadn't actually finished my video, so I now essentially screwed everything up and had to fix it all, but then went ahead and ruined it more by burning a hole in it and was now utterly, utterly in distress because my video was like useless. Other than all that, Mike was right, I probably needed to eat and it might not have been so bad. But basically, I'm going to chalk this up to a series of random events that are all my own fault and also blame pride, devastation, and PMS for all my troubles. And um, yes, so a few hours went by. I did try to fix everything, even with its holes. I added the glue again, let it dry as long as possible on its own. I held them together with clamps this time. I was doing everything in my power to get it right because I refuse to give up on this video, okay? I worked way too hard, even though it just seems like fabric and glue. And while that was drying, we went out to the thrift store to see if we could find any more vintage looking fabrics or better yet, a doll to replace mine because on top of everything else that was going on, I forgot to mention that the wonderful Walmart bag left a really pretty tattoo all over my doll's face and the acetone just did not want to work. Uh, but no, I couldn't find a doll there and I couldn't really find anything special fabric wise, but I did end up with two bed sheets and I didn't end up using them because when I came home to make extreme delight, I was able to pretty much fix the skirt. Then I remembered I had fabric scraps. So I quickly chopped off a little piece that matched the area where the hole was and added more fabric glue, stuck it on and left it for a few hours and Viola! The day was saved by my ingenious ADHD brain and my relentlessness. And as you saw in the footage, I did in fact use the same doll. What I ended up doing was a series of acetone and magic eraser, but staying far away from her actual makeup. So the stains are still there and you might have seen them. Maybe if you go back and look again, you'll still see them. But at this point, I am not gonna mess with anything else because I just know the more I try to fix things, the more I do the opposite. Basically, I'm done my story. That wasn't actually shorter at all. Which brings us to the end of the video. Okay guys, that's it for me and for my attempt at using the Sew Magic Barbie fashion set sewing machine um, that we really didn't use at all. Honestly, this experience was horrible for me. It was truly scary, but not in a way you'd expect. In fact, the only thing more terrifying was the commercial they used in the 70s. Look what I made. You did. I did. Oh. At the end of the day, this is probably not an item that I would ever recommend any Barbie collector seeking out because even though it could look cool on a shelf, it's just gonna take up space. I don't even think I want it anymore, honestly. The piece itself is yellowed and useless since mine is missing something and it wouldn't even work even if I put in batteries. And part of the allure to collecting things is that if you wanted to, you could gift it to somebody else who could still use it. And I definitely do not think that this is something that is ever gonna be usable again. 
again, especially since anyone who has one most likely has an empty or completely dried up cartridge. In fact, the only useful items in here were the fabric and the patterns, but it turns out the internet is also full of them, so you could easily just print something off and use fabric glue yourself. However, I would highly recommend not using the fabric glue from the Dollar Tree. Yes, folks, once again, it's on me that my projects fell apart because I did in fact use Dollar Tree glue. But a good friend of mine says that if I had have used a better fabric glue, this may not have happened because usually you can wash those items and they won't fall apart. So in the future, if I choose to use fabric glue on patterns again, I'm gonna use something better than the Dollar Tree items. However, in saying that, I also wanna point out that I think I'm just gonna learn to sew because this was a lot. I literally made the same skirt over about four and a half times, not including the one where I had to fix the hole. So I probably could have done better just hand stitching it or using a sewing machine. Regardless, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did or know somebody else who might, then please share it with them because at the end of the day, I worked really hard and I didn't give up and that's really all that matters. And of course, if you enjoyed it yourself, then please make sure you remember to comment, like, and subscribe. You can let me know down below what you liked or didn't like about today's video. <laughs> Just go ahead, it's completely okay. Also, share a time, as long as it's not too personal, where you completely broke down and overreacted to something that definitely did not call for it because Right now I'm feeling kind of ridiculous. But I'd also like to point out quickly that I got some really cool furniture. Having had that little freak out and needing to go to the thrift store to try to find things to replace it with, I got the furniture for my B-roll. So that wouldn't have happened if I didn't freak out. And I'm gonna call that a win because they're actually music boxes and they're really pretty and I cleaned it all out and we can fold up the clothes and stick it in the drawers. <gasps> oh, and also, also, how cute is she? This is one of the outfits that my daughter made. We used old pajamas of Mike's to make her little kilt. And uh, this one hasn't fallen apart yet, so that's awesome. I don't want my daughter to feel that same sadness that I did. At least not yet. She's too young for that kind of disappointment. <laughs> As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! <sighs> I'm a pirate. Mike says this is my pirate shirt. Ow! <laughs>